flying monkeys what are they and why do they take the narcissist side that's what today's video is going to be about we're going to explain flying monkeys and why do they listen to the narcissist and why are they under the narcissist control hey guys welcome back it's missy and if you're new here welcome I am a life and relationship coach and on this channel we get to the root of the issue and we learn how to heal and deal. So if that's your thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I would love for you to be a part of the fam. Also, if you're interested in doing a coaching session with me, I will leave the link down below which you can go ahead and check out. And I also have a course on 11 weeks to break free from the past, which if you are struggling with a lot of different emotional wounds, I'd also recommend you check it out. Let's get into today's video. So what are flying monkeys and where did it originate from? Well, the term flying monkeys first originated from, my understanding is the Wizard of Oz, when the monkeys are doing the bidding for the witches. And that's a term that carried over into the narcissism community, I guess is what you would call it. And so basically flying monkeys um, are usually friends and family of the narcissist or of both you guys and they do the bidding for the narcissist. So the narcissist is always looking for ways they can fulfill their ego. And part of filling their ego is having people that are on their side, on their team, that they can manipulate into believing they are this certain type of good person, this rich person, this high status person, whatever this delusion they've created, they have those people, um, they manipulate those people into believing they are this person. And they can play the victim role a lot easier so when they're in the wrong they could be like well I have this person that believes me or you know they'll they'll have that friend or family come and do their dirty work and, and fight you or you know smear your name this is an ego trip for them they can maintain staying in that victim role and act like everyone's up to get them because they have other people filling their head and validating them that what they're doing is right or okay and they're in the right and so narcissists have an ego trip, they get a power trip from this. Oftentimes, flying monkeys will risk themselves for this narcissistic person. And we'll talk about why. Why do these flying monkeys do this? And also, you know, who does the narcissist pick to be their flying monkeys? So usually a flying monkey, some traits they'll have is that they aren't very self-aware. They aren't someone that's very in tune with themselves and they aren't someone that can see these manipulative behaviors and they don't know what they're doing and they don't know how this narcissist affects them and also how it affects you. The other reason is some flying monkeys, not all, they all come in shapes and sizes. Some like the drama. They like being invested in the drama. They like being a part of the drama. It makes them feel good to put others down because it makes them feel uplifted. Another thing is a lot of people are sheep, they just follow the crowd. Only 10% of people are leaders, 90% are followers. Which sounds weird to say, but it's true. There, are, A lot of people just follow the crowd. That's why we've had dictatorships and people have followed these awful rules because a lot of people just follow and they don't lead. So that's what narcissists do is they'll pick these people that are more likely to follow them and don't really have minds of their own. Another is because the narcissist acts like a victim, these Flying monkeys have a savior complex where they feel like they need to save the narcissist. They are doing a service and they are serving justice for the narcissist by attacking you, the person that's hurting them. So some flying monkeys are very self-righteous where they're like, you know, you need to be doing this and you're in the wrong and I would never do that. How dare you do that? They throw stones at glass houses. And often flying monkeys are enablers so they will enable the narcissist and they'll they'll be like oh my god i'm so sorry that's happening to you and they don't question the narcissist story or they don't ever really challenge them and that's exactly what the narcissist is looking for someone that will not challenge them and someone that will do everything they say and eat up every word that they say flying monkeys also are easily manipulated so these people they may not have a strong sense of self they may be more passive people they obviously are uneducated and don't know the signs of manipulation Maybe they've dealt with previous manipulation themselves, so they're easy to manipulate. They don't have really strong boundaries. And so because they're easy, easy to manipulate and control, the narcissist will take that, will use that to their advantage. 
and also it makes them feel like they fit in they feel like they're a part of something they like that the narcissist makes them feel special because the narcissist also to some degree love bombs them of like oh you're such a good listener thank you so much for being there for me you're the best friend i ever had whatever it is they will love bomb them in some degree and uplift them and it makes them feel good so they feel like they fit in somewhere and they'd rather be a part of it than not so those are the type of people that narcissists usually look for and conform to the narcissist manipulation and those are usually their flying monkeys now there's another thing we have to add of how this comes about and this is how they build their their army their flying monkeys so it doesn't just start with one day where like you know they act their you know happy-go-lucky self in public and then all of a sudden they start to say like oh you know my partner or my daughter or whatever so and so is so terrible no they leave trails and they slowly do this smear campaign over weeks months years however long you this person has been this narcissist has been in your life so they plant little seeds into the flying monkey's head and it can be very subliminal you guys don't know how many times i literally had to re-say that word because it kept saying blah, 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 blah. anyway so they may start with rolling their eyes when you say something or they'll say like little passive aggressive comments like um the narcissist will say oh yeah to me and <laughs> he barely works i know it's just he just doesn't know how to have good worth ethic and you know make it like this joke they will embarrass you in public and say things that make you look bad and so they do this over time and so that's where they plant the seeds and then they'll start to get more risky and they'll start to say more things maybe they'll call up a neighbor and complain about you or a family or a friend so they're rallying together the troops and they're making complaints about you and they're already painting this picture of this narrative of who they have made you out to be and so so while they're rallying these troops they may call up family or friends and say like i need your help Timmy is not getting a job, even though you have a job and you're paying all the bills, they'll paint this narrative because they don't like that maybe you don't have a six figure job. They'll make it seem like you're a bum and you don't do anything, or they'll make it seem like you're crazy, especially if you start to figure them out. They'll start to make it seem like you're crazy. Like, you know, Timmy over here is going off the rails or Sally over here is going off the rails and you know, we gotta, we gotta help her. We gotta get her to therapy. They're, you know, they're, they're going crazy. and they'll especially do this if you start to show that reactive abuse in public so over time when you're dealing with this abuse you become a completely different person you may become more drained you may um you know snap more often you're not yourself and so they see this and then they're like oh yeah that narcissist is you know telling the truth like you know look at sally and timmy like they're not doing so well and it does seem like they're spiraling so we need to get their help so that reiterates that story and that's the crazy making part of being around a narcissist really behind closed doors they don't understand that this is reactive abuse and they're tearing you down and they're stripping your sense of self and your self-worth and they're making you feel so terrible that you've lost yourself you've lost your lost your light and that's the only reason why you're acting like that not because there's something wrong with you but the flying monkeys they don't have this education they're not aware of these things or they like being a part of this drama or they they see it that the narcissist is the victim so what do you do one we have to acknowledge that there's a lot of betrayal and grief people the flying monkeys the people that you thought were closest to you that wouldn't do these things they hurt you in ways that you couldn't imagine they believe things about you that are really painful and your ego gets in the mix and you're like oh my god this hurts and so you will try to fight it and you may try to defend yourself so much and, and the thing is you don't want to fight you don't want to go against the current you want to go with it like when you're in the ocean I don't really know much about the ocean but i know that when you're in the ocean you don't go against it you'll get drained you'll die it's terrible it's a battle what you do is you want to go with it you want to go with the flow not let it take over you so the first thing that you want to do is stay in your reality that's what's really hard is when you feel like you have a team against you you will that self-doubt will come into play that you know you questioning yourself will come into play you will get into that fight flight mode where you will get into the fight flight or freeze mode where you start your your nervous system kicks in and you 
start to have more panic or you feel like you need to fight everyone or you just stand still and you're internalizing everything and you are not able to function so you have to be aware and make sure that you don't get into that mode you need to trust yourself and know like there's facts to back up that this person has abused you 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 know you know that you've tried to have rational conversations with them and they couldn't do that you know that maybe they've touched you inappropriately you know that you were not this person in the past and you know you're a different person when you're not around them you know these things and that's what's really important is you remember the facts and you stay in this reality the second thing is don't overly explain yourself to these flying monkeys they don't care they've already been manipulated and programmed to believe the story the narcissist has been working on them for a long time through these subliminal messages and through them reaching out and probably reaching out when you didn't even know they were like making phone calls and doing things behind your back when a flying monkey comes to you and they start saying like you're doing this and you're doing that and you're wrong and you're they're saying all these things you're going to get that urge to be like you don't understand what's going on i <clears throat> i'm being gaslit you know they're manipulating they're a narcissist you'll try to share with them all the things that you've learned but the the flying monkey doesn't care you'll also want to overly explain yourself because you want to be understood you want to be heard you want someone to listen to you for so long you've been silenced and and not heard and also the people that you thought cared about you are betraying you so you'll want to explain like no please like hear my side like don't abandon me stop doing what you're doing but why take your time and waste your breath to someone that doesn't want to hear you out and doesn't want to educate themselves and doesn't care to learn it's a waste of time really your best effort is to be silent is to say nothing me personally i say things along the lines of well, I've treated them so bad, I guess it's good that they left or we're not a part of each other's lives. That's a way to, to silence them and not give in to what they're saying because at that point they're like, wait, why isn't this person uh, fighting? Or like, what? that's weird, they're so calm. That's a, They'll question, they'll, they'll be like, that's weird. Someone who did all these things, it doesn't make sense that they would say something like that. Or if you have to say something, stick to the facts and the evidence. Because it, it's not, it's best to distance yourself from flying monkeys but that's not always in the cards sometimes we have to see these flying monkeys and so maybe you work with them maybe you live right next door to them whatever the case is if you have to deal with them maybe you live with them if that's the case um, then just stick to facts and evidence and don't really explain yourself don't teach them you know these new terms you can be like well if that's the case then why does this happen um, keep it short and simple if you must say something but it's really just best to let let what happens in the dark come to light and to just stay silent, silent, to keep to your own. The third thing to keep in mind with flying monkeys is some may come around. Some will be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I fell into the narcissist trap because we all get tricked at some point in our lives when we're first dealing with a narcissist. You, you're not born and you're like, oh yeah, I know it's a narcissist. No, we all get tricked to some degree. So they have also they also may be going through their cycle of learning what narcissism is or or seeing like oh you know this person wasn't so good after all and so if they do come around you get to decide do you not want them in your life do you want to build a relationship but maybe have boundaries you know you can still have this person in your life but just be careful of them because they did turn so quickly and you know that trust has to be earned again so it's important to maintain your boundaries and you get determined do i want this person in my life or do i want to let them go and the last thing is definitely have sources of support it's really important that you feel like you have people you can rely on even if maybe everyone in your life is has turned on you there's people online that will understand you and will be able to relate to you and will have your back so definitely reach out for support it's very draining dealing with this stuff and it's really important that you know you're gonna have to put on a face and a and and protect yourself around flying monkeys and narcissists but when you're on your own you know process your emotions deal with your emotions and have those have that outlet have those people and and make sure that you're filling your jar because it can get drained real quick so what do you guys think leave it all in the comments below and please don't forget to like comment subscribe and share with someone that you think may need it until next time thanks for watching bye guys 
and it can be very subliminal subliminal and it can be very subliminal subliminal blah, 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 blah. the whole time i wasn't recording so there's a grasshopper that's living in my house right now chilling living his best life rent free and i got attached to him i named him the jumping guy and so i've been trying to put him in a bucket so that i can take him outside because now i'm attached now i don't want anything bad to happen to him i don't want to find his dead body i don't want to kill him i feel like there's a certain point where a bug they're like they get too big to kill like it feels too close to a human like tiny little spiders kill them all they're dead they have no life they don't deserve life they're terrifying but anything any other bug no like i feel terrible i don't want them to die that's only because my fear overtakes my empathy for spiders. Anyways, so jumping guy, he has this routine where he goes to my room and then he hops and he goes in the laundry room and he chirps all night. Uh, anyway, so last night I went to go try to save him and take him outside and I saw something moving and it was under my dryer and I was like, oh, that's weird. And then today I look over and chirp and jumping guy is chirping in the laundry room and there's another guy that was underneath the cabinet and I was like oh there so we're having two roommates now okay cool I do a client I come back to the kitchen and I see a spider started was sucking his blood and killing him or I don't know if they suck blood and they put like liquid they liquefied them I don't know but he was killing him he was suffocating him to death and I was so upset um, I didn't even get to know him, I didn't get to name him, but he was suffering and I, he had to get chewed, he had to get like hit with the shoe. And I was so, I was crying, I was really upset, I got attached. I didn't even get to name him. 